In this video, I'm going to create the hammer for the Samaritan. It's difficult to sell in this uh, reference here, but this is really the only rounded piece that I'd want to do as a smooth mesh preview or proxy style model. The rest of this stuff is pretty hard edged. So I'll just show you here. And the, and the other reference you can plainly see, like that's, pr that's a pretty hard edge, and this is as well. So I think we'll save some geometry just creating these as primitives and interpenetrating them and just combining them in the end. In fact, even this piece up here is basically just a cylinder, so we'll just tack that on as well. So we'll go ahead and start this with just a regular cube. And this could be done uh, as a series of extrusions or it could be done um, as with insert edge loop or whatever you want to do. It's, uh, it's sort of however you want to model. I'll just do this one uh, as a series of extrusions here and I'll just grab that bottom face, um, go ahead and do an extrusion. And in this case I might go ahead and just pull this down where I want it to end. So I want it to end something like that. And then I'll just add some divisions on this. I think that'll be faster than me just doing extrusion after extrusion. So I'll just add a few divisions onto that. Uh, maybe four divisions is, uh, is about right here. And then I'll just read uh, sort of position these verts to get me what I want. Now this is going to stick out a little bit. Um, so this will actually round out just a bit. So I'll try leaving those around there. And then I want to try to push these around uh, and make this as, as efficient as I can. If I don't need a span, I'll get rid of it, but I think I'll probably need all these that I added. So that comes out there somewhere. In fact, that's pretty straight down to there, so I'll just go ahead and do it like that. This guy might be needed around here. Okay, so that gives me a basic start. Now keep in mind that this is this has perspective, so we're trying to align basically um, the center of this. We want to hit sort of where this is, but we don't want this these edges to hit that. And I'll show you what I mean in just a second. If I just press three, that gives me a smooth mesh preview, and this is what I'm talking about. Like I don't want to align this vert all the way out here because notice it has these little tags that hang out. That's actually the rounded part, and you can see that if you go to a smooth view. But it's easier to line these things up in wireframe. So you just got to keep in mind that you're looking for these little tags to align those out to what the depth is actually supposed to be. So in this case, uh, another thing I want to keep in mind is what level of subdivision am I looking at? So I'm just going to press page down until I get back. That's my original, that's my cage. So I'm just going to press up one time. So for doing real time, that's where I want to be. I don't want to add a bunch of divisions to this thing. I just want to add a few divisions to this just to help smooth it out a bit. Again, we are going to be seeing this thing at a pretty good distance. So something like this is looking pretty good. You can see it's, once you have your geometry basically set up, um, it's pretty fast to go back and tweak this. Looks like this has just a bit of a flare at the end maybe or something. So that's looking pretty good. And this, this part up here actually looks like it's ending about in the right place as well, maybe just a bit higher. Okay, let's double check that from our perspective. Make sure that our resolution is going to be about right. Obviously, it's uh, way too skinny. I've only modeled that basically from the side, so I'll just widen that out to about where I think it should be. Looks like something like, like that should be about right. And that resolution feels feels pretty good to me. I, I don't feel like anything's really drastically uh, missing, so I think that piece is actually looking pretty good. I plan on leaving it like that. I'll go ahead and add in some primitives now, so um, that looks about right. And I'm just going to move this back and up. So again, I don't want to move this on X, so I'm just going to control shift the X axis and just shift this back here. Again, that just controls so that it doesn't move on X at all. So now what I want to do is, I've already got these contact pins added, basically they were just primitives, so I just went ahead and added those. And I'm just going to snap this down where it meets exactly at the center. So now I have a, a perfect alignment there. And now I just need to size this down to whatever seems appropriate given the reference. So on the reference it looks like maybe something like that uh, in terms of size. Let me just get this basically centered and we'll scale it down. Whoops, got some vertex faces there. <clears throat> so something like that. It looked like from the reference that this came out pretty flat along the front. So maybe something like that's getting pretty close. And then this side here actually has a pretty decent bevel to it. So when I try to select these edges, this is something you're going to find all the time. You can't select edge loops on end gons. So an easier way to do this is just select the face and then um, use control and then whatever 
the function key is that's associated with the component type you're interested in. So F9 for verts, F10 for edges in this case, F11 for faces, F12 for EVs. That's just a quick conversion menu, so just control in the F key. So just grab that and bevel that edge. Maybe just pull that offset up a bit. Maybe it's something like that. And then maybe just add uh, one segment to that, something like that. And then in here, you actually can control the, the smoothing angle in here sort of independently. So that, that'll help um, smooth that thing out a bit. In this case, it didn't smooth out the other loop. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. And I will go with a higher angle on this one, so maybe like 45. And that should smooth everything out. So that looks that looks pretty right. And I think that position-wise, it's actually very close to where I'd want it to be. It looks like I, I don't think that pin actually stuck through super long ways. Let me double check here. So we got this pin. Well, it does look like it's offset a bit, so maybe that is um, pretty close. There's the there's the pin on the other side there. So I just need to basically add another version of this. And I've already got this guy here, so I guess I might as well go ahead and, and reuse that. Or I could pot potentially just maybe grab that one, since that's probably pretty close to the right size and everything. Just duplicate that. And then in this case, I'm going to center its pivot, because its pivot is probably down at the origin or something and pop that through and then scale this up and it may be that that has a cutoff end I'll double check that in one second yeah you can see the border edge there so this definitely has a, a cutoff end and I would say scale wise it looks like it should also go ahead and come up this way as well Let's scale that down just a bit so maybe that's pretty close to what I want and again, I cut that off because it, didn't, it wasn't needed in the other one, but in this case, I do need that face to be there. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill hole. I don't even need to select it because I only had um, the one place it would need to get fixed. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Um, I think if anything, that round part, this, this part right here, may actually be a little bit on the big side. So I'm going to go size that down. I've already got it sized on Z, so I'm just going to go ahead and hold Control and grab that and pull it down. That helped. And uh, same here. Just go ahead and bring that down as well. So that sticks out on the back side and on the front side, which looks like um, pretty close to what I have there. If anything, maybe that just went a little too small. OK, so these are just little tweaks anyways. So that's looking pretty good. So I'll go back to the side. <coughs> And in this case, I'm getting a little bit off from what I have here, but again, I can attribute that to perspective. I basically have that firing pin right where I want it, so I want to go ahead and make sure these things align to that. So th this may be slightly off, um, but and I'll just account for that when I need to, if something doesn't work out. So I'm going to go ahead and add this part down here, which is just basically a cylinder, and I just need that to be on X. Take a look at um, overall sizing. So I'd say that right there probably goes through the axis of this piece here so maybe it's around something like that and you can see that it's actually cut off here let me just scrub here just a little bit so you can see it's not actually a full cylinder it's cut off there and then um, it's actually got a little bit of a notch down that happens back here at the back so there's a little bit of a notch into the cylinder, and then the front edge is actually going to be cut off. So I'm just going to make sure that I basically have these things where I would need that to be. So in this case, it looked like that more or less aligns right with the front edge of this piece here. So I'm going to just make sure that I have one that does that. So in this case, I do, because that's my front edge, and that basically is aligning pretty well with that point right there. So since I just have... Um, uh, cylinder here as a primitive. Basically what I can do is just select these edges and this is probably going to be easier to do <clears throat> from perspective and maybe even just isolate select this. Basically what I'm going to do is just select these edges from here to here. Um, oh I can't do that. I tried to tried to get a, a, a ring selection like that and that doesn't work. Um, so basically from there to there and then just delete them and that'll just flatten that out to this sort of semi. And let's see if this is um, about where it needs to be. I think that looks about right. Um, obviously our width is, is way off, so I'll go ahead and pull that in. And this should just be inset. And it actually, 
this leaves a little bit of extra room back here. So it's possible that this thing actually needs to be just slightly bigger. Let me look at this. Oh, there's a there's a bit of a gap there. So I'd say we're we're still we're still looking pretty good. And then there is that little step down thing that's happening. And I think that's probably right around here. So what I'll do is I'll just add a new uh, edge loop right underneath one of these. So um, maybe it was right underneath that one right there. So I'll just do an insert edge loop right there. And then I'm just going to pull that basically straight down and snap it like that. So that'll continue the curve. So I still have a nice uh, even cylinder here. It's just it's cut off at that one point and drop down. So I'll go ahead and soften and harden this whole thing. So that catches that edge now. I do think, I feel like maybe this gut, it's not really squished. It is a correct cylinder right now. It just feels a little flatter than it should. So I'm just going to pull this out a little bit and uh, see if that helps. That did definitely make that look a little funky there. So I'm going to leave that one alone pull that out just a hair. That just may be a bigger jump down uh, than what it looks like it should be. It's a pretty, it's not that huge a piece right there. So let me just see what we have there. That's actually pretty dang close. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that's actually right. And then I'm gonna snap align this one to that edge because that's what def it definitely looks like in the reference and then just harden that edge as well so it gives us that that step down so I think that's probably pretty close to what we're supposed to be double check this from the side everything's still lining up um, the way it should so now I'm gonna go ahead and add this bit up here and again I'm not gonna extrude this out because if we look in the reference here it needs to be inset here and it's just gonna be more efficient just to go ahead and do that as a separate object that's interpenetrated it'll work fine so just set that back up to about where it's supposed to be and I do want that front edge to roughly align here which looks good already and then I'll just move this up to wherever I need that first um, shift to be so basically I'm gonna do something like that grab this I, I want this to be interpenetrated but again not all the way um, through like this and then I'll just come up to that edge and what I'll do is an extrusion here that comes all the way up here and then I'll just start extruding this one back as well and in, in this case actually I do need one right there so I'll just drop that guy there and again I'm gonna stay on this this piece here I'm not gonna follow this edge it's this edge grab that face uh, go ahead and do an extrude um, and in this case, I'm not going to smooth mesh preview this. So I do need to just basically to add enough geometry to make this look the, uh, like a decent curve. So again, I'm going to go for relatively even distribution while the curve is um, pretty similar. I'm not even worried about that top edge right now. And I do, do just want to make sure that interpenetrates in the last point. Um, so that looks pretty good. And then I'll just go ahead back through here now and grab these verts and just redistribute them a little bit. And these won't even make too much difference. Basically, all these are doing is um, interpenetrating. I just need to make sure that they are far enough in, since this is a rounded form, that you don't see them. So something like that is looking pretty good. And we probably are the wrong width right now, but that's basically what I need uh, for that form. And this one here also needs to be inside like that. Grab that face, do the extrude. And in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and pull that all the way up. I might need one extra facet through here, but we'll see um, in the end. And this guy here probably just basically goes straight on, straight on up here. Okay, let's see how that looks. Now I'll just double check this in um, the perspective view. So the piece looks fine. All of this is going to be um, interpenetrated. So basically, I don't need any of these faces up to here. Probably need that one face right there. So I'm just going to delete those out. This is interpenetrated. Don't need that. Go ahead and delete that out. The rest of these are probably needed just to make sure the interpenetration stays um, where it's supposed to. Uh, take a look here. It's actually pretty close. Maybe it could be just a little bit thinner than what it looks like right there. Maybe something like that feels right. 
so that's all looking like it's ending up about right. I'm not sure here though. That piece looks a little off to me. So I'm just going to grab all these pieces together now and isolate select them as a group. So let me try pulling this edge here back a bit. That feels more appropriate. It feels like it should be ending around the front of this piece here. So let me just go ahead and snap to that edge <clears throat> and maybe just very slightly interpenetrate that so we don't have any Z fighting happen. And then I'll grab um, the, this back edge. and pull that back in just to fix that little bit of overhang problem there. Okay, so that's that's looking fine. Uh, this is sticking through very slightly. So what I'm going to need to do here anyways is go ahead and make this. Um, I think that that form actually looks correct. I'm pretty happy with that and I think resolution wise it's looking pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and convert that to polys. So just convert smooth mesh previews to polys. That way it maintains exactly what I set up as smooth mesh previews. And then I'm going to go ahead and push that one back in, something like that. Stays flat along the front. Okay, that's all looking pretty good. So I'll take a look at this on the gun again and see how it feels. I think that looks about right. So um, the only thing I notice now is there seems to be a little bit of a lean out to this compared to what I see in the um, in the reference. It feels like it fills that void uh, more than this and en this ended up doing. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull all of this stuff in and what I can do to do that is just select all this stuff, turn on smooth mesh preview, I'm sorry not smooth mesh preview, soft selection and then down in soft selection uh, set this thing to global and that'll actually affect basically everything and I don't want this actually to affect this stuff uh, down here. I just want to affect um, all of these pieces. So I guess what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn off my uh, soft selection temporarily and I'm going to just going to select all these pieces here and I'm just going to move them back slightly, something like this. And this way they won't um, affect those other objects. So again I'm going to select this, press B uh, to get that soft selection. So now I have that fall off happening all the way across there and I'll just pull that forward a bit. So maybe something a little bit more like that. Just sort of give it a little bit more of a lean to it. Uh, so maybe something like that is going to work a little bit better. And you know what actually would have been um, really smart, it's not really a big deal in this case, but if I had if I'd grouped that ahead of time, then I could just return that group back to a zero position. But in this case, like it's, it's, it's easy enough just to basically get an alignment there. Okay, so let's see how that looks. Definitely feels a little bit better with that lean to it. I think that's uh, that's looking pretty good. So now I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, group these pieces. Um, just turn off my soft selection again. So I'll just go ahead and um, not group, but go ahead and combine these pieces. Um, that way, these are always going to be moving as a single object. So I'll just go ahead and do that. And I might as well go ahead and, and set the pivot point for that as well, just so we can make sure that um, it looks like it, it works properly. So I'll just center it to start and then D and V, and I don't need V, but just D and sort of move that down to about right where that center point would be. And in this case, if I really want to make sure that's um, that's in the right place, just D and V, and I could snap it to that edge there, and then I believe it's that edge there. And that should be pretty much dead center for this guy. So now uh, this hammer cock action would look like that, which looks like it's moving basically um, the way it should and then that would be the down position. So that looks good. I think the the hammer is uh, a decent looking piece. Uh, we got got away with, with it being relatively cheap. It's under 500 triangles. Um, so I think we're pretty good to go. And we will see the front face. I was going to say we could potentially clean up a few things but I think that's pretty much going to be what we need to have for that object. Alright so the last piece is the clasp and I'll do that in the next video.